Welcome back to the Remedial Film Class Podcast. I'm your host, Dan. And I'm Travis. And I'm George. Hey, George, how is your jugglers situation? Are you up to, like, your knee in jugglers? I'm or up to my neck in jugglers. Up to your, you never should have <laughs> let the statue guy no. stand on the corner. You if can't. you had nipped this in the bud, they never would have crossed your balls. Right. That's on you. It's true. Good job. It's true. This week, we watched one that George had actually seen before, uh, but maybe he's seeing it in a different light now. Hot Fuzz. George, how's Hot Fuzz doing? Fuzz is here. You uh, saw this already? Yeah. Shit. Long time ago. Yeah. I thought I watched it too, but apparently I didn't. Oh. I didn't remember anything. Yeah. It was, it was like accidental an... first watch for Travis. I yeah. I think the only thing I remembered was the guy getting the piece of the church. <laughs> it, it, Which is straight out know, of the omen, Getting, getting his the head replaced by a piece of the church. Yeah. It, instead of being impaled by the uh, thing at the top of the church. Yeah. Like just the church. It's I a, think that the, uh, in real IRL, that piece of church would have crushed his entire body. Yeah. It wouldn't have just stopped at his head. I think it would have went <laughs> all the way through, but... Well, you know, the realism is not always there for us. Yeah, you don't come to Edgar Wright movies for realism. You come to Edgar Wright movies because they're the most fun movies that people make today. So it was very fun. Glad we were able to do this. Do you see, George, why maybe the specific reason I made you watch Bad Boys 2? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this movie loves Bad Boys 2, as do I and as should you. (laughs) It has the it has the most explosions, and it's uh, got the uh, the 360 camera roll. Mm-hmm. And it's got the you know jumping while firing two guns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing it didn't have was the uh, water splashing out of the toilet's gunfight in a in a giant bathroom. Yeah, know, but yeah. you did Matrix get style. an amazing, I guess, like a Cobra reference. If we're going like, why Ooh. are they in a grocery store? But that yes. whole grocery store shootout feels very Cobra. This whole movie just feels like it's citing other people's work. Like, it's Shaun of story. the Dead does that quite a bit, but I feel like this takes it to another level of, like, everything they do in this movie is specifically chosen as a reference to something else that we should have seen. But I like Shaun better. That's fair. That's, you yeah. know, it's both it's, excellent uh, movies. They're both fun, but I think Shaun hits, hits me in the feels a lot better, a lot more. And I grew up on cop movies, uh, but I just think Sean is a m- more gooder, uh, more oma- yeah, more gooder homage, more gooder, yeah. Both are fine. I, I mean, I was w- watching this movie. You, I, I can't watch this movie without thinking of Shaun of the Dead. Well, some of all the, the some cuts of the, some, and all the yeah, shots, the way, and yeah. yeah, all the cuts, the way the, you know. You know, things happen like boom, 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 like which is you know, very Sam Raimi. You know, Once, unlock the door, like, you yeah. know, like hang up your hat, <laughs> blah, 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 like it's exactly <laughs> like zip in, zip yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. It's it's so Shaun of the Dead. I mean, that's the first time I've ever seen right. Sh- you know, shit like that. Um, see, when I watch Shaun of the Dead and I see those cuts, I think of Sam Raimi, uh, Sam Raimi's influence that you're going to eventually see. Yeah, uh, a lot of he does all those real quick jump cut kind of. Yeah. It's a it's a cool way of telling a story without like, you know, without all the BS. Right. You know, you don't need to see all this that happens. You just have to, you know, it's just boom, boom, boom. Okay, I get it. But the dude, the dialogue is so funny mm-hmm. when he talks to his boss and he's like, "How's the hand?" And then yeah, he's like, "It's still still a little stiff." And then then like he talks to his boss's boss, "Hi, how's the hand?" Uh, it's still stiff. And then like it, it's just. I love him. He's like, you want him to come all the way down here? He's like, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> and how are your how are your team you gonna feel about this? <laughs> <laughs> They're already ready. <laughs> I do have to say the um, the character that Simon Pegg plays in this is not as relatable. No. Like he's a, it's almost like a a a, a Clarice type character. As, but like Sean is just an everyday guy. And yeah, you can relate to him more. This, See, and this I guy relate took me so much to the character that Simon Pegg plays in this movie. So, 
you know, oh, yeah, sure. mileage may vary, but that is mm-hmm. like, you know, yeah. I don't know. I Grew love up. how, I love how Danny like repeats things that, uh, <laughs> that, it, that, uh, Sergeant Angel says. Right. But like that he said in confidence to Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a big, it, it was a big Friends thing. So when I was good. watching this movie, I was like, oh my God, like Friends does that all the time. Oh, yeah. Where one person talks to another person in confidence, and then before you know it, it's become the entire subject of the entire episode. Yeah. Is that, that little conversation. <laughs> uh, Frost's character, I, I kind of, I liked him. Um, he had He had more layers than... His character and Sean. So I was like, I, I didn't, I never saw the the third one. What's the, is it like a World's End or something? The like World's that? End. I have it because it came in a three pack with these this okay. and Sean, and I I still haven't watched it, and I don't know why because I love Edgar Wright's movies, and I'm just yeah, uh, and disaster movies are just as homageable. So why am as... why have I not watched that movie in two years? I don't know, but I will eventually, hmm. I guess. I mean, it's no uh, hot tub time machine, but. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I I enjoyed the uh the fight in the little the little village. Oh my god. The mini mini village, the Godzilla fight in the mini village. Yeah, yeah. the Michael Bay <laughs> car chase yeah. that leads to the mini village so you get a literally larger than life fight to end the movie. Yeah. So yeah. good. Well, and the cannibal <laughs> holocaust stabbing at the end. Yeah. Where you know you expect him to be a dead man, and then oh, it hurts so bad. <laughs> yeah, I was I wasn't <laughs> expecting to see Timothy Dalton. That was a added surprise. He's always a delight, man. Anything you put yeah. Timothy Dalton in, you've improved the thing. Yeah, a lot of class. It's George, like do you like know who Timothy Dalton is? No, he's Skinner. Here, he was. Best known to people our age as the bad guy in The Rocketeer, which I don't think you've seen yet. Mm. Oh, God. For shame. Yeah, I got you by 10 years. I remember him being in Flash Gordon movie. Well, and he was James Bond for two and films. He was James Bond for a couple of years. Yeah. Which is really? hilarious. If you go back and watch his James Bond movies at the time, they're very Casino Royale. Mm. Grounded, realistic, boring. Uh, <laughs> Casino Royale's not boring, and, and really his aren't either, but I think they were seen... As kind of a departure, but an attempt to reboot the Bond thing is a bit more grounded. Well, Roger realistic. Moore kind of made it a comedy or comedic, yeah. not really comedy, but it was like almost, I don't want to say slapstick, but well, yeah, Roger I mean, Moore's... lasers and moon rakers yeah. and stuff, yeah. Yeah, they kind of yeah. went off the, they jumped the shark a bit. Now, guys, did you catch my favorite thing about Hot Fuzz, which I noticed at the time because I was already into this kind of stuff, but like. The middle half of this movie is a giallo. Yeah. Mm. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, when that happened, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now I get it. Yeah, yeah, man, it's Bad Boys 2, but also an Argento movie. It's Bad Boys 2, too, but also Dragnet. <laughs> Did you ever see Dragnet? The yeah. Movie Dragnet? Yeah, it's got some Yeah, they Dragnet. do that whole secret society thing. Well, and I love the... Uh, the guy that was an extra in Straw Dogs, and they just like throw that out there twice. And then, mm. if you've ever seen the original Straw Dogs, you know. And if you haven't, George, we won't talk about it anymore. I have not. But if you know, you know. Ooh. They did not miss a single opportunity for humor in this movie. No. Like, it's almost exhausting how funny. Like, it's almost too much funny. Like I almost need like guys, can we just go two minutes with a an establishing shot? Just give me a second to like. I feel catch like I up. was watching Thor Love and Thunder. <laughs> Where I was entertained. I enjoyed it, but it was just too much funny to like I, it just took me out. Like it was just like Sean has the humor, but humor based in the story. So you're never really taking you're taking the humor of the characters as like a coping mechanism in this, it's just like yeah. one liners, which is a, a cop movie thing. But yeah. Did you so tell him to cool work. off? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love in the supermarket where they're discussing uh, catchphrases. And he's like, yeah. well, I handed him the monkey. 
And I said, I was. Play Times Over or something like that. <laughs> play Times <laughs> Over. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes. I love and while they're while they're having that conversation, like knives are just flying yeah. past their face. And he was saying, I should have said when he landed in the freezer, uh I should have said this. And he's like, Oh, that would have been great. But yeah, that that, that kind of stuff I was fine with. Because it kind of was in the moment. Oh, I, I I like the knives flying past their faces. <laughs> while they're discussing. But charging that. the meat the meat department <laughs> with the the, heck was the that? shopping carts. I'm <laughs> just like what is what am I watching? Yeah. Well, I'm pretty uh, sure that those knives would not have gone through the slats of the go, uh the shopping cart. I would have loved to have seen one of them just lay in it and get pushed themselves firing <laughs> from the shopping cart. Come on, guys. Hmm. Hmm. And there's a lot of guns. I thought I thought there was like a weren't any guns in England in in the UK. Well, if you oh, notice no, the guns that they're the using even at the end are mostly like World War II era guns. Like they aren't like fully like modernized. Guns. The pistols are right. modern, but like I think there's like a Sten gun at some point, and it's just like, oh, okay, so like we're really reaching back. Well, for... they covered their ass. They they mentioned the countrymen, not in the city. The countrymen have arms, right? So right. they did mention that. So they, I wasn't mad at that, but I was just like, I remember. You know, hearing there are no guns there, but the, there was a shit ton of guns at the end. <laughs> like, even the priest had two guns, didn't he? Well, I would say that probably <laughs> elements of the third act of this movie are exaggerated a bit. Yes. I don't know. George, can you back me up on this? Uh, No. Oh, okay. Maybe no. I'm off then. Mm-mm. It's nope. not very grounded. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was... I thought it was perfect. And then it suddenly it's like the good, the bad, and the ugly or something, and he's riding in on his horse covered in weapons. Yeah. And, uh, can I say, huge Walking Dead reference. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> him on that horse with the, the duffel bag of guns on his back. Yeah. I, I, when did this come out? 2007? I don't know. 2007. Seven. Okay, so the comics might have ref- gotten the idea from this. Well, and... That image is straight off of the spaghetti westerns, so okay. they're probably all sharing. Okay, that thing. Yeah, but I had we need to watch Rick, some spaghetti westerns. Come on, I put aside uh, the three Clint Eastwoods too. Wah uh, wah yeah, wah wah! Definitely, the good, the bad, the ugly. I uh, I very much liked the end, not the end end, but like towards the end when he's basically kind of just figuring it all out that it's uh, uh, the grocery store owner. What's his name? Skinner. 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 And I I love the, like the almost like Sherlock Holmes, um, you know, you know, cut, like cut, cut back to, you know, this scene and that scene and this scene and this happened and, and like hit all of his powers of observation basically mm-hmm. coming together. And then he pulls up the dude's pant legs and he doesn't have <laughs> like any, like, yeah. and he's just wrong. And then it's a but scream moment. Or then it's he like, like oh, there's more he, than one. He vamps for a moment and goes for the other pant leg. I love yeah. that bit so much. So good. I just appreciate this movie, man. This is a, this is a good flick. The thing I think threw me off homage wise because sean is in your face homage like you can watch it and go oh my god that's a complete and total you know love letter to everything that we know this you have to really really pay attention to the the love they're given to these cop movies and these like shoot 'em ups because it's yeah it's not directly in your face and so i don't it makes you work a little bit i don't think that i've really seen enough of these cop movies or shoot 'em ups to still even to to get it right. Oh, what's the uh, uh, the movie? The other movie that was referenced heavily. Oh, not Bad Boys Two. Point Break. Point Break. Point Break. Oh my God! At at the end when like Danny can't shoot his dad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like shoots into the air. Yeah, it empties the entire clip. <laughs> no, I've air. never shot my gun into the air and gone, ah. I love it. <laughs> I love, yeah. Point the break. Only, I don't remember if that's good or not, but that might be a watch. The only thing that I, uh, I mean, I was thinking about like all the things like that that actually 
that paid off. Like oh, c- because almost everything that they mentioned comes around. Yeah. Right. The only thing that, and maybe they did pay it off, and I wasn't paying attention, but the the notebook, like the notepad. Right. It's yeah. Like that was like your most important tool. Right. They never really paid that off. Yeah, but you get that great joke where he says, you know, <laughs> stop writing, team. stop writing, stop writing. He just keeps writing. <laughs> that is and true. Then he said, "Stop writing," and then he said, <laughs> "So it, yeah, it doesn't have like some overarching payoff, but that's a good joke." It is yeah. a cop thing, though, because my brother used to always say, "You know, that's the probably the more dangerous than a gun is the is the notebook." You know, the you can basically you could write anything you in the notebook. Anything. You're a cop, right? <laughs> uh, so be nice. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Like I mean, he did. I mean, Danny did s- say, "Like, wait, hold on," and then like hand him the notebook. Right. You know, <laughs> I it would have been cool if it stopped a bullet or something. I don't know. Yeah. I thought it was. Uh, I love the <laughs> when he goes to the pub for first. It's so the Winchester, uh, and then he sees like all the underage people. Like it's just it, he's like having overload. Of illegal activity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, this poor guy. He's so straight and narrow. You know, it's one of those things, I, it'd probably be worth revisiting every, like, couple of years. And then as you watch it each time, you'll pick up more than you saw the first time. But also, in between, you'd be like, oh, hey, I just watched, oh, gotcha. You know? Mm. Like, the Cobra thing. You know, how long has it been since you watched Cobra? Oh, and God. They, yeah, and and then now next time you watch it, be like, oh, it's Cobra. Actually, it reminded me a lot of the Steve Austin uh, wrestling match in a grocery store from the early two yeah. thousands. Oh, when he beat up Booker T. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and he slammed them on all the meats and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Sure. I'm having a run moment where I'm like, oh yeah, that w- yeah, I remember that match. That was in August of ni- uh, two thousand four. <laughs> it was a, I think it was a Raw. But yeah, George, they had a wrestling match inside the supermarket. (laughs) And they just tore the place apart. Very much like the gunfight in this movie. Yeah. I think that deserves a hell yeah. A hell yeah. What? The only uh, wrestling (laughs) moment that I remember vividly is, and I wasn't watching it when it happened. I watched like a replay of it. What? Was when Mick Foley's tooth came out through his nose. Yes. Oh, the hell that, in the cell. Yep. Hell that in was cell. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> that that's epic. That's the only pro wrestling that I think I ever watched. Because watch I knew live. because I knew what happened before I watched it, and I was like, "This is gonna be good." And I watched. <laughs> He's it. like at his finger up, like yeah, <laughs> and his his molar. His, I don't know if it was his, his incisor or his molar was like sticking out of his nose. Yeah, it's Oof. fantastic. Yeah, That's my cool. wife hates wrestling. Uh, imagine that. Uh, but I showed her that match years ago when we were first married. And she turns and she goes, if it was always this good, I would like wrestling. Mm. And I'm like, if it was always this good, everybody would be dead. Dead, yeah. yeah. Also, like yeah. most of those guys are dead. So uh, ironically, the guys from that match, not dead. Not dead. <laughs> but most of the guys from their era, already dead. That's kind of sad. Crazy. Sorry to bring down the room, everybody. Yeah, wow. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> I wish I uh, had seen this a few times so I can uh, do more references. But it's so fresh in my mind right now. I watched it a little too late. Yarg. I would have liked to see, uh, have seen it more than once as well. Mm. Well, now you've seen it twice. <laughs> uh, you guys are welcome to watch it again, and Is, we can uh, pick narg? this up tomorrow. <laughs> N- narg? narg? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the other word? Gar? <laughs> Yar, I think. Yar. <laughs> well, in the translation session between the townie with the guns and the cop with the dog. And they're like four degrees yeah. of translation. Oh my god! <laughs> they paid off the mine. Yeah, they did. The who? The the mine at the end that blew up the building. They paid that off. You're like oh, wondering yeah. why do they keep showing this thing in yeah. a very Wayne's World kind of yeah ending. Very funny. 
Oh man, that lady cop from the small town who, you know, is one of the heroes she's at the end. Trip. She's on Fleabag as like the evil stepmother. Holy mackerel. Mm. Have you guys watched Fleabag? I don't know if you watch a lot mm-hmm. of TV. No. But it's a I don't even know what that is. British TV show on Amazon won like all of the Emmys one year. What what one of those TV awards just swept the place. And it's like the funniest show maybe uh, of the last 20 years. The lady hmm. that wrote it, Phoebe Waller-Briggs Bridge, Phoebe whatever her name is, she wrote the latest Bond movie because they liked her okay. show so much. Huh. Yeah. Funny doesn't always equate to a Bond film. Well, and I haven't watched the new Bond movie to tell you if it's any good, but mm. it's three hours long. Who has time for that? Oof. Uh, but she, uh, Fleabag, the TV show, holy mackerel, guys. Uh, that's a recommend. And then she did okay. a show for net. Well, it's on Netflix now. I don't know uh, who she did it for. It's called Crashing, and it's not the Crashing with Pete Holmes on HBO. It's a different show called Crashing, about British like twenty somethings, basically like crashing in an abandoned hospital as like a okay. way to use the space. You know, you sign up, and you're basically like it's like a hostel but without any of the amenities. Anyway. Okay. That show's insanely good, too. Everything that lady touches turns to gold, so that ha- that bond has to be good. Huh. But anyway, the evil stepmother from Fleabag is that great lady cop, and she's amazing on both things. It's very good. I, I, I don't know if you saw the, uh, uh, the TV show that has Kate Winslet shot here in Philly. Uh, is it something of ma- the mayor, mayor of East mayor of Town? Mayor of East uh, they do a lot of that Hill Street Blues, like in the uh, precinct meetings. Like the, every morning, they would do that meeting. Uh, they do that on that show, and it reminded me of the old Hill Street Blues, where they kind of it's like the before they go out in the street and they get like a briefing. Yeah, <clears throat> like uh, on Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah, so. When they did that in in this show, I was like, "Oh, but it's it's just so country bumpkin because they're they just kind of look like they're cops and they might run a hardware store. Like they're not really, they're not none of them are badasses at all. Yeah, and they eventually get there, but fun characters. Did did that police force have two sets of twins? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Because the guy at the front desk was definitely twins. Yes, he right. was twins. That that was like a little little reference. That was to... very good. Yeah, very funny. I was waiting waiting to see the slaughtered lamb. That would have been cool no. if like the pub the pub was called the slaughtered lamb. What or was something. the pub called? Did they even uh, Did they even say the Winchester? No, I, I don't wish. know what it was called. Did they even say the name? But then the uh, the two detectives, I guess, were like just brothers or were they just like very similar d- dudes hmm. you know the two detectives that the yeah. call them a twat <laughs> yeah the mustache guys <laughs> yeah you have, mustache. you have a mustache <laughs> I know I know <laughs> <laughs> uh, or how about the whole the uh, the hotel lady oh the hag okay. Oh, the hag. Yeah. <laughs> fascist. Fascist. <laughs> uh, he's like, no, nah, it's Seven fascism. Down. It's fascism. <laughs> that paid off. That joke came back. Yes. A lot of boomerang jokes in this. Yes. As I said, there's a lot. Like, almost everything. Yeah, a lot of callbacks. I imagine that this is what a... Uh, what a community movie would be like. Mm. Very well written. All the stuff kind of comes around. Yeah. It reminds me actually a lot of um, Back to the Future. Back to the ba- Future. Oh my God. Okay, so tell me about <laughs> Back to the Future. No, uh, it's just, just in the way that everything pays off. Like yes. absolutely everything is shown to for you a for a reason and yeah. it all comes back around. Sometimes not in this movie. That's true too. Back to the Future. Sometimes you'll get the payoff in like the third movie. I, and you're like, holy crap, that's I, back. I don't know if if you guys remember, but you assigned the other Back to the Futures as homework. Yes, I did watch them. 
All three? Yeah. Nice. Two's good. Three's all right. Yeah. Two and I think one and two are could be I could see somebody doing a Mr. Sandman DVD of those two movies, making them one movie, like they did with Halloween one and two. Because yeah. they, they do they they hold up. One's not better than the other, they're both pretty epic. They both have some egregious issues, uh, but mm. for the most part, they are perfect. C. I I'd like to see these guys tackle like the John Hughes type movies. That would be uh something to see. I really would love to see their their take, their lampooning of that that genre cuz it is a genre. He made probably like 25, you know, written and or directed. And they're kind of the same universe. So that would be interesting. Get some planes, trains, some Uncle Buck, Breakfast Club, Home what Alone. Are some John, Home John Alone. Hughes movies that I've seen. Ferris Bueller, okay. Home, Home Alone, Breakfast mm-hmm. Club, Sixteen Candles. Didn't see it. Didn't see it. Home Alone. I said Saw that. that. Uh, Weird Science. Weird Science. Okay. Uh, jeez. Although didn't didn't Chris Columbus direct Home Alone? He did, John, but John, John Hughes, Hughes wrote, wrote it. it. Okay. And we we've already talked about what he must have been watching when he wrote it, but that's Right, it. right, right. Yeah, it's definitely a universe. Who uh who did this movie? Edgar Wright, I believe his name is. And did he do the other ones? He did, yeah. Shaun of the Dead. He and, did Shaun you know? and the World's End. What else has he done? Baby Driver. Did Baby Driver, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which I never would have watched if Aaron hadn't sent it to my house and said, you have to watch this. <laughs> and now it's like in my top 10, like if I've got an hour to kill and I can't watch a whole movie, that's when I'll pop on and just wherever it starts on the voodoo, I go from there. Hmm. Uh, it's really good. Last Night in Soho was his most recent movie and it's kind of a giallo, kind of a trippy mystery thriller movie. It's really well put together and cool and like not too violent to like you know it's one you could watch with somebody who's not into violence but it still has like the cool trippy mystery thing okay and he did the uh don't trailer for grindhouse okay so yeah he's really i mean after i watched baby driver and realized how dumb i was to not watch it for so long just because it was called baby driver and that sounded like a movie i wouldn't like uh, I think I've realized <laughs> that Edgar Wright is right up there in my top current directors. Like, I need to keep an nice. eye on his uh, The Running Man that he's supposedly doing. Now, is is Edgar Wright, do all of his movies have kind of the same style, or is this like a Simon Pegg style? I think it's yeah. him and Simon Pegg together. Yeah, the they, camera movement they, stuff, you'll see that in a lot of his movies. You're like, oh, hey, I know that shot, you know. But the humor, the humor is not as universal. That's more a Simon Pegg thing. Yeah, because I don't think there's much humor in Baby Driver. That kind of has like a more of an action feel. Yeah, action thriller. But it's like lighthearted. It's really good. It's lighthearted. I okay. should have watched that. Uh, I might make you guys watch that. And you gotta watch Scott Pilgrim because, goddamn, so much fun. <laughs> and I would dare say you don't get the black keys. Without Scott Pilgrim. Now, I'm sure there's more in the ether that they pulled from when they formed the Black Keys, but man, the music in Scott Pilgrim sounds just like that, and it's like 10 years earlier. Hmm. Yeah, I wasn't sure if uh, Edgar Wright is like uh, like a Guy Ritchie. You know, like all of Guy Ritchie's yeah. movies have it's the same style. Yeah. style, it's like the same feel. No, he's good, but he, he has... He's varied, varied style. Uh, He's not like a Tim Burton where it's like, oh, (laughs) or a Rob Zombie where it's just, it doesn't matter what he does. It has the same people and the same exact look or feel. Hey guys, Munsters coming soon. Watch out. Did you watch that trailer yet, Travis? Yeah. (laughs) Hey. (laughs) No good? Oof. (laughs) Hey, even my kids were like, this looks terrible. (laughs) Rob Zombie, your girlfriend, wolf. <laughs> oh. yeah. 
It's a shame because I wanted it to be good. But yeah, I had I had lukewarm it, it, hopes, and then still let me down. It doesn't have the right tone. No, but you know, uh, when we finally get around to watching some zombie on this show, I hope that we fully appreciate it. Hmm. I I guess I have to. I'll have to watch it to have an opinion. But my opinion is if they were going to do this, they should have went the route of like the Brady Bunch movie or Scooby-Doo where it's like a serious but tongue-in-cheek kind of satire version of. Yeah. And this looks like it's just they're... <laughs> He's doing a Monsters TV show and that's it. Like there's no... There's no hook. There's no. Yeah, it's not meta. Like it's it not be. meta at yeah. all. Where it should be. It well, should be I don't them know. They the show up world. at somebody's door, and the person has their face painted and freaks out because it's a real monster. Ugh. Even describing that part doesn't sound fun. Yeah, but that was done in the Burbs, and it was way better. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. I mean that 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 storyline has been done many times. But if they handled it like a you know, a Fright Night or or the Burbs where it's fish out of water uh, mystery and these people are just, they don't belong in that town and they're just, there's a mystery around them. I mean, they, I could go, they could go literally anywhere on October 31st. Right. And that could have been the story. fit right in. That could have been the story. Maybe it still is. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe it is. We'll have to see. Maybe it's the new Halloween movie. Where uh, Michael Myers is actually adopted by the monsters. <laughs> Icons die tonight. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, have you watched the trailer for Halloween Ends yet, Travis? I watched it today. I have not I'm, watched it. I, I am not going not to watch it. it. I know I'm going to wait till the movie comes out and I'm going to watch it. They don't show it. you anything, so you're safe. Well, there you go. It. See, I'm not going to. It's just like visuals. It's not really any stuff. I'm worried I'll pick something out and be like, oh, there it is. Spoiled it for myself. Yeah. Damn it. They do a few. See, yeah. I don't need that. I'm not going to look. Not going to look at it. I did that with Halloween Kills, and I liked it. But that's for another night's discussion, I think. I can't wait to have that episode. Although the best part of Halloween Kills was not spoiled in the trailer. Because I know how Travis feels about Halloween Kills, <laughs> and I know how you and when I know we watch how you it, feel about it. When Damn. we watch it, we're gonna watch it together, and I'm gonna say you're gonna see when my smile goes away. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> I can't turn that frown upside down. <laughs> You'll see when someone kills my puppy. Oh my just, gosh, I'm just so like, uh, I'll be wearing my Beauty and the Beast T-shirt that I don't have. Mm. Yeah, they should be fun. Now we've got uh, some really interesting things on the horizon here, George. Don't know that you're ready for all of the things we're going to throw at you. Yeah. But uh, do you see now how Bad Boys 2, but also Hot Fuzz, kind of tie together everything we've watched over the past couple of weeks? And it's it's really just like one conversation held while jumping in the air, firing two guns and going, ah. Uh. <laughs> True Lies, too, falls in that category. Oh, yeah. 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 There's an arc to this, man. Fast Times does not. No. <laughs> no. Except for the... Uh, well, that'll crash. pay off here pretty soon, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, he'll see. Now, George, <laughs> did you do your homework? Did you watch Bad Boys, the original? No, I actually just got the I DVD tonight. To okay, well, we will continue our vigil until we hear your very hopefully brief and hopefully agreeing with me review <laughs> of Bad Boys. <laughs> yeah, give us like a, a an Aaron, you know, seven paragraph double spaced. Mm. We'll we'll put it on the on the on the World Wide Web. Travis also gave me my own copy of Fast Times. Yes, I did. Oh, excellent. So that's good. So now I can watch it again whenever I want. Yes. Now, did you check it to see if he's already worn out the good parts? <laughs> uh, I'm sure he has. Uh, <laughs> I honestly, that was a... F when did we watch that last week? Two weeks ago? 
two weeks ago. That was the first time I watched it in about 10 years. It was not worn out. Well, there you go. Yeah, if the DVD skips at that certain part, <laughs> it, it, it shouldn't. I am going to know why. <laughs> it's not even my, my disc, so... <laughs> 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 it came it came from a lot of DVDs that I bought. Sure did. The one you own right the one you will have watched is my copy. Did it skip? Skip to the end. <laughs> Let's skip to the end. What's that from? Uh Princess Bride, I think. I could be wrong. But I think it's the wedding. Skip to the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I do. I do. <laughs> Get to the I do. It's either that or space balls. <laughs> they both Ma- have good winning. Mowage. Mowage. That's <laughs> what brings us to weather today. <sighs> have you ever seen space balls? Yeah. Okay. Because they reference that, and I don't know who did it first. Yeah, I don't know. Because I think it was Princess Bride, but they're, I think. I like how the space Princess balls Bride has in the credits, they have. That character down as the impressive clergyman. That's <laughs> yeah. The spaceballs one. He's like, now we're gonna do the fast version. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. No. Good. Kiss her. <laughs> You're married. Kiss her. <laughs> yeah. So rude. Uh, Community does a really good marriage episode. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the community theater. Th- but have I you think seen it's... the marriage Jallo? No. Yeah, there isn't one. No. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Actually, it's there's torso. Plenty, but it's called torso, isn't it? Oh, torso now, is so good. If you guys actually, if you guys watch Community, it's uh the, the marriage episode is the second to the last episode. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe we'll start another podcast called Community Theater. We should. And we'll just watch and talk. Be fantastic. Do dramatic readings of the scripts <laughs> from your favorite episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Table readings. I suck at cold readings, though. We can't do that. You just got to practice. Work. Get get practice. I'm not a working it. actor because I can't good. read. You don't have get to good. cold read. <laughs> practice it. Well, you may uh, not be able to read, Travis, but you do know how to pronounce Rob Boutin's name. Why is it yeah. Boutin? It's spelled Botten. The hell. I don't know. Where is he from? I don't know. Maybe the E is silent. So silent you don't see it. I don't know. It's just weird. <laughs> but I heard, Boutin. I heard that <laughs> guy e that used is, to work with him on that documentary that we sponsored mention it. And I was like, oh, son of a bitch. That guy actually knew the guy. So I guess that's how you say it. The E is both silent and invisible. And deadly. Um... <laughs> that brings up a, a great story uh, where I had a bonehead moment when I met Matthew Lillard from Scream, friend of the show. When uh, you said his name, I knew who you were talking about. Yeah. So I got him to sign my Scream mask, and I'm talking to him because he gave everybody a little bit of time. And I kept saying, Neve Campbell. I was like, I just have to get Neve to sign it. And he corrected me. Uh, and I felt like I felt like a shithead. Oh. Uh, Nothing against him. He should have corrected me. But I kept calling her Neve, and he's like, it's, it, it's Nev. <laughs> you like, didn't say, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, of course it is. I'm so sorry, Matthew. Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. I, I was so embarrassed that I didn't think to be funny. I mean, the move would have been, been yeah, she may be Nev, but she's no Sharon Stone. Stone. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I was just so embarrassed. I was like, fuck. I just told him I was nervous. I, I knew it was Nev. Well, see, now your karma is aligned. And e- 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 there's equilibrium in your karma because now we've got one you said correctly. Yes. Boom. The gods have shined down on me. What are the gods going to show George next week, Travis? <sighs> next week will be a movie. Oh, wait, oh, hold yeah? on. A movie? Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Haven't seen one of those yet. Uh... I don't want to give anything away, so I'll just give you the title. Okay. And you let me know if you've I, heard I, of it. All I need is the title and year. Title and year? You need the year? I do, to make sure I find the right one. Okay. Uh, it's a small art house film called 48 Hours. Okay. Ever heard of it? I thought it was a TV show. 1982. 82. 48 Hours. Wasn't there a TV show named 48 Hours? Well, there hours? is a... 
the first 48, I think it's called. Well, that old TV. 48 hours was like a TV news magazine type thing. Oh, okay. Like, like Dateline. 60 Minutes. Yeah. Deep, no, yeah, okay. Yeah. So you don't know anything. You don't know who's in it. You don't know why I might we're be thinking it. of 24. Okay. So never mind that. Scratch that. Reverse it. Uh, yeah. Scratch that. Reverse it. Okay. It's called 48 Hours. 48 Hours. I believe I have the DVD for you. Never heard of it. Good. It's probably got Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. No. Or Sylvester Stallone. No. Maybe. Why should we close any doors? Maybe it does, it, George. It might be Nicolas Cage movie. Maybe it's got Neve Campbell in it. <laughs> Maybe it is just an uh, hour and a half version Nick. of the TV show, 48 Hours. Hmm. 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 No, I have no idea what I'm in for. Cool. Excellent. Between that and Bad Boys, the original, you're... Definitely going to like one of the movies you watch next week. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe both. Maybe neither. <laughs> Maybe neither. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out when he texts us at 830 and says, be here 930 sharp. <laughs> and we know I just, he didn't like I it. I just have done that for the past two I know, weeks. So it's I become I continue. routine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a good way for you guys to know when the movie's going to end. It's true. True. Yeah. We appreciate if just, it. If I just text you when I start it, when it's going to end. At least it's the opposite of. Uh, we'll start whenever you get here so I can turn this movie off. So that's good. That was the worst, man. <laughs> that I mean, that was the worst experience I've had podcasting so far. Well, wait till after 48 hours we're doing Wild Things 2. Followed by Wild Things 4, <laughs> Four. Foursome or whatever. And is there really that many Wild Things? I think things there's is... four. But I think is two, really? two, three, Dude. and four, I think we're all like straight to DVD blockbuster movies. Do you remember wow. uh, what was the movie we were watching, Dan, that you said, like, what is the difference between this movie and an episode of Law and Order? Oh, Primal the, Fear. Yeah, yeah, Primal yeah. Primal Fear. Fear. Primal okay. Rage. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's how it, that, that's the feeling that I got with uh, Wild Things. It was like, like a TV what show? is the difference between this and The Young and the Restless? Well, I mean, the, <laughs> the, the, like, the nothing. movies. Nothing. There's, There's nothing. Boobs. Why do I, yeah. <laughs> boobs and Why do I have to watch this movie? Why can't I just watch this on TV during the day? Angry, half angry pickle. <laughs> That's true. 45 <laughs> degrees get... of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, shit. God, that movie was so bad. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that movie was so bad. I, I, then you made me watch the rest of it. You guys are friggin' <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just, just just for this, we probably should watch Showgirls. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm ready. Whenever you guys are ready, I'm so excited to watch Showgirls. I am so excited. I am also so scared. <laughs> I mean it's got Gina Gersh on it. You can't mess with that. Kyle McLaughlin. <laughs> Fabio looking dude. It's got plenty of <laughs> things going on. Plenty of things. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely plenty of things. <laughs> oh my. Oh. Well, I'm going to thank the listeners finally. Oh, yeah. Listeners, thank you for sticking with us. And thank you for joining us on the Remedial Film Class Podcast. As always, you can find us at facebook.com slash remedialfilmpod. We'll be back next week with 48 Hours, the, the movie, not the TV show.